say, Scotty. Scotty, everything you say is invalid because you're Scottish. Hi. <laughs> Didn't see you there. Hey, everybody. It's me. Oh, my gosh. Another video. How bizarre and wacky that is. Yeah, I know it's been a while. And by a while, I mean like a month or something like that. I don't know. Every single time I upload a video, I feel like it's another six months until I do another one. But then I look back and it's just like, yeah, you uploaded one a month ago, idiot. So you probably saw the title of this video and the thumbnail and are probably like, what the heck, Kai? That doesn't sound like anything you told me you were going to make on your Twitch streams. And you'd be right. You'd be definitely correct on that. Uh, that's because this video is kind of an enigma in and of itself. Bear with me. So I'm in college and recently I was given an assignment to talk about a piece of audio production. Uh, history of it, how it works, that kind of stuff. It could be anything from equipment to auditory techniques to really just anything involving audio, but it had to involve audio in some way. We were able to choose our topics and me being the weird guy that I am, I uh, wanted to talk about what Foley was. If you don't know what Foley is, that's okay. Uh, I'm gonna explain it in the video. Don't worry, we'll get there. But the most interesting part of this project was that I could either make a boring old PowerPoint, ugh, or a video. You bet yourself I saw those two birds. So I decided to make a video and that assignment is going to be today's video. So another tidbit about this is that uh, while I wanted it to be educational because it's, you know, part of my grade, I also wanted it to be funny and unique to me, so that's why I'm posting it here, because it is pretty funny. I thought I did a pretty good job at it. I did kind of nerf myself in the humor department a little bit because it is an assignment, it is for a grade, and I need that grade. There could be a lot more jokes where there could have been jokes, but I didn't put them in there because, you know, once again, the grade. Before the video begins, please drop a like and subscribe with post notifications on so you can know where I am at all times. I can't hide. I'll never escape, dude. Like, yeah, I'm stuck in this cycle and I just can't. Also, while you're watching, a fun little thing you can do is uh, keep in mind that I showed this to a class of college students and my professor. So, uh, hope you enjoy. On to the video. Hey everybody, it's Kai. And in my presentation, I'll be teaching you all about Foley. And by all, I mean what Foley is and a little bit of history about it. So first we'll ask the question, what is Foley? Foley is a technique used in post-production to create or recreate sounds in an environment where they A, were previously absent or inaudible, B, heighten or enhance an existing sound, and or C, instill a certain emotion in the viewing audience. Typically Foley is created by a group of Foley artists who go into a large room to record the sound effects using a variety of tools at their disposal. These vary from giant sheets of metal to the teeny tiniest grain of sand. Well, they use lots of grains of sand. It's not just one. That'd be, be really hard to use. Anyway, in this room, Foley artists are given a list of sounds they're supposed to make for the film. They key in on a certain sound, and after experimenting with different items, voices, sounds, and devices, they come together to emulate their given sound in the recording studio. Once the audio is recorded, it is sent off to a sound engineer or a sound editor who tampers with the audio to give the sound a few finishing touches. After that, the sound is sent off to an editor who places it in the film. Rinse and repeat and you got yourself a nice heaping spaghetti pile of sounds for your movie, show, game, commercial, or whatever you want. But how did this auditory solution come to be? Well, to talk about that, we gotta go into the history of Foley. The earliest use of Foley was in radio. During this time, instead of television, audiences would tune into these programs known as radio dramas or audio plays. These would be played on, you guessed it, the radio, and would entice viewers to tune in for every episode when it came out. This is because practically nothing was pre-recorded back then. This meant that actors would act out scenes live. No screw-ups or redos here. Hey, but wait a minute. How do sound effects play into this? Great question. You're really paying attention. I really appreciate that. You see, sound effects were created live while the actors acted out scenes in the radio dramas. They would do this to help audiences imagine locations, items, and other sounds throughout the episode. This proved to be very successful as listeners enjoyed being immersed in these fictional worlds through sound instead of just hearing stagnant dialogue between some random people. People liked it so much, in fact, that film studios began to add sounds in their movies as well. However, every new frontier needs a pioneer. Hey, that rhymed. Introducing... Jack Foley! So yeah, in order to talk about Foley, we gotta talk about Foley. The guy, not the sound design technique. Before he ever got into film, Jack Foley lived in Bishop, California with his family during the 1910s. You see, Jack was a man who was very involved in his community. 
He worked at the local hardware store, created drawings for the Bishop newspaper, and helped the community theater by making plays for them. This care would soon save the town as once people began leaving Bishop for the new, cool, and hip Los Angeles, Bishop began to lose money. Jack attacked Foley, swooped in, and called up some buddies who worked in the film industry to convince them to shoot some westerns in Bishop. They agreed to the offer, the town got some money, and Jack Foley got into the film industry as a location scout. After this, Jackie Boy gets a job as a sound designer on this silent film. Yes, I realize the irony of what I just said. Let me explain, though. Universal was working on a film called Showboat. You see, Showboat was coming out when movies with sound, talkies, were becoming the norm. This prompted Universal to change the film from a silent film to a talkie. They needed someone to do sound effects for the film, but no one took the offer, and with Mr. Foley always willing to take up a challenge, stood up to the plate. And he hit a home run! The studio loved Foley's work ethic and sound design, and he became a favorite among Universal employees. After Showboat, he worked on multiple other movies where his signature style of sound effect design was created. How it worked back then was, Jack Foley and others would record sound effects in a room during the entire length of the movie, watching and making sound effects while the film goes on. This audio was then recorded onto magnetic tape, tampered and edited with multiple different techniques, and aligned with the movie as it played in theaters. This was the simplest way they could add the sounds to the film without it having to be out of order, and if it's something like a comedy, that's really important. In fact, here's an example of such a thing not working correctly. Not as funny, right? Jack Foley would then teach his techniques to his followers, who would go off and use these newfound talents at different movie studios. This spread the concept of Foley across the film industry, and many studios started using Jack's special way of doing it. Uh-oh, it's fun fact the clock. What's the fun fact of the day? Around this time, the name Foley, for being used to make sound effects, started to spring up. It got this name, obviously because of Jack Foley, but also because on sets, Jack Foley's students would tell one another to Foley certain things in reference to their sensei. This got spread around to the point where studios started using it as an official name for sound effect creation. The techniques for Foley began to grow to multiple groups of people, and as the 70s rolled around, sound editors were finding it difficult to record and Foley their own sounds, so they outsourced the work to people like athletes and dancers. These types of people could handle the rhythm of sound design and would make it easier for sound designers to get work done. This was a really short and small period in the history of Foley, uh, and it doesn't really happen that much anymore, so... Uh, Moving on. It took all the way up to the tail end of the 80s for Foley artists to actually be credited for making sound effects, and when the 90s rolled around, they got a special reward for their hard work. They were given a new form of audio recording. This format's new name was Digital Recording. Magnetic tape was slowly going away in favor of digital recordings, which allowed studios to have different takes, easier audio editing, and more freedom when it came to audio recording. And throughout the years, this way of recording sound effects would advance technology into today's audio software and devices. This has been my presentation on Foley, and I hope you enjoyed it. After the smoke had cleared and I stepped away from the computer that hid my face from my classmates and professor, I was met with an unexpected reaction from them. It was actually very positive. There was actually a lot of clapping and applause. Like, they actually liked it. Yeah, I was very surprised. A few people even laughed throughout it, so that's... That's a solid win in my book. And someone even said it was the best presentation so far. Take that as you will. Anyway, time for some updates on the channel both here and on Twitch. So my streaming schedule has changed a little bit. Tiny little itty bitty tiny little bit. All right, I now stream at 7.30 p.m. MST on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays now. So, uh, be sure to go over there, check it out, drop me a follow. I'm a lot more active on there anyway, so you'll actually probably get to talk to me like that's... It's kind of epic. You, the viewing audience, can vote on my next YouTube video by going to my Discord and voting in the YouTube area on a poll. Joining is free, and so is dropping a like and a comment down below. Did you like my presentation? Did you think it was maybe a bit too meme -y? Not meme -y enough? Maybe not enough information? I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. And be sure to subscribe with post notifications on so you can know when I post. <laughs> it could be tomorrow, it could be today, it could be in a few hours. You, <laughs> you don't know, you'll never know. And finally, while you're doing all that kind of stuff and all that jazz, how about you go down and look at some videos I've done, man. That'd be pretty cool. They're on my channel, they'll be posted right here, I hope. 
thank you for watching this far. You have made my day. I hope you have a great day, night, or whatever you're doing. I'll see you next time when I accept my award for best presentation so far. See you around.